we used to, you know, turkey hunting was used to be, you know, you. It was a different. It was a sport where you had to set up and you had to do the, you know, everything just right and you had to be in a perfect location. And now they've got things where you can you can look like a. They'll put a big fan out there and you walk up on the turkeys and they don't even know what that you're behind it. They they're so dumb they think you're another turkey and. So things change, and, and the rules change of the game. And I want to tell you something. That's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what Jesus did for us. He changed the rules of the game forever, completely. He completely um, turned it on its head from what it used to be. Um, and today I want to talk a little bit about faith that walks. Now, there's a couple of different writers in the Bible that um, I want to look at today. The first one is Paul. And Paul was this guy that was a Jewish, uh, he was a Jew, and he was a mess. He was going around killing Christians, or he was condoning the killing of Christians. After Jesus' death on the cross, there's a new dispensation and if you don't know what dispensation is, it means there's an exemption from a rule. We are now living in a dispensation called grace dispensation. Jesus gives us this dispensation because we got exempt from some rules when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And everybody's like going, yeah, I like being exempt from rules. I don't have to be handcuffed to anything now. So there's a, Jesus did break some handcuffs from the religious folks. And so this new dispensation opened up a new way of doing business as a church, as a body of believers. And it forever changed the way that we approach God and who he was. Um, the cross was this new rule. And that rule broke this other rule of animal sacrifices to appease a God for our sins. We didn't need that anymore. We don't need uh, to go kill a, a lamb and sacrifice it so that we can have forgiveness of our sins now. We don't need that. So Paul, what he did... Do y'all hear music? Do we have music playing, Kyle? I hear music. It may be just me. That's kind of scary. I'm ready. Well, it seemed pretty good. So that may be a that may be y'all might be seeing something this morning you weren't expecting. Or I might be seeing something I wasn't expecting. But anyways, we don't have this we don't have this dispensation of sacrificial living anymore that we have to sacrifice things to get a, a, a forgiveness of God. And so Paul spent his time telling people about this new dispensation. They're like Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't have to do that anymore. There's a man by the name of Jesus that died on a cross for our sins. And this ushered in the grace dispensation, what we're living in now. The old rules, all these rules and laws of priests making sacrifices for our sins, no more. We don't have to, we don't, we don't follow that. What a fantastic event. So Paul is telling the world about this new dispensation and he is preaching the good news, this gospel, and he's writing it in letters and he's sending it and telling everybody. And this is a verse he wrote in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. He says this, For it is by grace you have been saved. I want you to check this out. This has got a lot of meat in this stuff right here. For it is, grace, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. 
It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Okay, with those two verses right there, we have enough information that we could have multiple church sermons on that. For grace. So I want to take a side note, and we're talking, my message title is Faith That Walks. But I'm going to take a little side path and we're going to talk about grace for a second. We need to understand what grace is. Grace is given by God to allow us the opportunity to seek Jesus Christ as our Savior. Grace is when God gave us a chance at redemption instead of allowing us to die in our sins. There's this old song that says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Without grace, we would all have died in our blindness to who God is. Let's boil grace down just a little bit. Grace is the thing. Grace is the opportunity for us to know who Jesus is. If we don't have that, when we sin, and we've all sinned, the moment that we sinned, God could have said, we're done with you, and you would have been done. Grace is what God gives every single person that gives them a chance to have a relationship with His Son. So when we talk about grace, grace is a little bit more than just this thing that we all should get because we're human. No. Grace is this humongous gift that gives us the opportunity, for it is by grace you have been saved. Without it, nobody has a chance. Nobody. You didn't deserve a chance. I didn't deserve a chance. No one in this world deserves a chance. But God's grace and His love for us, His mercy, allows us a chance to have a relationship with the Father. Here's the thing. Without grace, we would all have died in our blindness. Without grace, faith, check this out, the very thing that saved us, faith, it's because it says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Without grace, faith would never have been a possibility. If you're taking notes, that's a really good note right there. Without grace, faith would have never been a possibility. Why? Because faith, and I want you to like, I want you to lock this one in. This is one of those things I want you to put in your brain and I want you to hang on to it. Faith must have an opportunity. Faith must have an opportunity. If I never hear, then I don't have a chance to choose. If I never hear, I never have a chance to choose. Grace is that chance for faith to have a choice. How important is grace now? Now, let's go to the message that was all free. 
so that we have grace squared away, let's talk about faith. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1, 1, most of y'all know this. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Here is what grace gave us an opportunity to do. To believe in Jesus, the whole package, even though we never saw him, we never saw the cross, we never saw the empty tomb, we've never saw any of that. We have to believe what he has said based on what has been passed down, what we have heard, what we feel, what we think, and what we see currently in the church and from other believers. Do you realize that? I've never got to see Jesus. I never got to touch him. I never got to walk around and share a meal with him. I've never laid my hands on the man. Do you remember the story right after his resurrection and he showed up at the disciples' house? And there was a disciple and his name was Thomas. And what was his problem? What is his name? What are they, what's his nickname? Why? He said, I'm not going to believe unless I can touch his scars, his side. I'm not going to believe. That's what he said. His faith all was in what he could get his hands on, what he could, what he could see and what he could like, actually touch and, 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 and have some sort of his centuries uh, like firing that he knows that, man, yeah, that's, I see those scars. I know that's Jesus. I know he's alive. Well, Jesus did show up, and Thomas was able to see and touch his wounds, but then Jesus said something, and here's the thing. Jesus said something at that event, at that time, that resounds with every child of God that's ever walked after that day. This is what he said. He said, then Jesus told him, this is in John chapter 20, verse 29. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Here's the deal. It's a choice. Grace has given us a chance for a choice. And that choice is ultimately each individual's on their own. Faith is believing without seeing. I love the movie. You remember that movie, The Case for Christ? I watched that again the other day. And it's about that guy that was an atheist, and he was a reporter, and he wrote that book. It became a huge seller for Lee Strobel. And he was talking with his atheist friend. It may be the best line in that whole movie. And his atheist friend told him, he said, here's the deal. It takes a leap of faith either way. Even as a faith or an atheist, you have to have faith that what you're doing is what's right. Either way, it's your choice. Grace gave us the opportunity to make that choice, and it's our choice. And it takes a leap of faith no matter which direction you go. You can say Jesus is a fraud, a liar, the whole story is a hoax, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. It kind of boils it down as a person wanting to get saved or they realize that there's something missing. That's when the Spirit of God moves on our soul, convicts of sin, and helps open the window of our soul to the need of our Savior. Even, even if you don't know much, even people that don't get it, uh, our former uh, district superintendent, he said it's like they, everybody has this stain of creation on them. Everybody has a stain of creation. A stain of... 
that gets me. That, that, that kind of excites me a little bit because even people that don't want to believe and don't, and don't want to have anything to do with God or church or being a Christian may not have any idea about it. There's still something that God has painted on everybody. It's this stain, and they know that there's something that is higher and bigger and, and stronger than they are. I guarantee you people don't walk around here just thinking, okay, this is by chance I'm here. Sometimes, you know, like when you try to run away from God, you run into him. There's sometimes, somewhere, somebody is going to be hit with the stain of creation and they're going to have to decide. They're going to have to, have, they're going to, have to choose one side or the other to walk on. Grace, that wonderful gift, gives faith a chance to take hold. Then, like in Joshua 24, 15, he said, Then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. It's your choice. If I could shake hands with people and that would redeem them and make them a child of God, I guarantee you there'd be a lot of people I'd be shaking hands with. But that's not how it works. There's a cross that still looms over all eternity and that cross comes with a choice. And grace gave that faith the ability to have a choice. So faith is the avenue to salvation or denial. This is some good stuff today. I'm just telling you. God's good. I like when he gives stuff that's good. Don't you? Isn't that good when he talks to you and he like, like points some stuff out? So let's revisit, revisit Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. We covered that. We pounded on that. Yeah, we got that. And this is not from yourselves. Todd, you didn't earn it. You just didn't earn it. Bill, you didn't run fast enough. It was, you didn't do anything. We are saved through faith. Our works, our goodness, our own righteousness. That's a good one right there. Our own righteousness. I wonder how many times that Jesus vomits when he hears someone says, well, I'm a good person. See, when I get that, I just pretty much, it, it, I just shut down right there. First of all, you're conceited like all sorts of conceited. Jesus Christ said, somebody came up to him and said, good teacher. And he goes, why are you calling me good? There's only one that's good. So when I walk around and go, well, I'm a good person. Yeah. No, you're really not. You're not good enough. Our own righteousness, all of that, none of that played no part in our salvation. We can't boast of anything but remember the title of my message, Faith That Walks? I read that Paul wrote about being made right through faith, but there's another author in the New Testament. His name is James. And he turned faith upside down on its head. And I kind of think we should put maybe a banner up. 
I'm always wanting to put a banner up, you know, like putting stuff up. I think it's cool you should put stuff up. I'm not a decor person, so maybe I'd have to have somebody design it. But I think we should be a James church. I think the book of James, we may, that maybe should be our church. And here's why I want you all smiling when you walk out the door today. Because I think our church is a James church. As I go through this, I want you to check it out, okay? I want you to think about this. I want you to see if we're a James church. Because I think we are. See, we still preach what Paul preached about faith. But there's another faith. It's, a, it's the same faith, but it, yet it's a little bit different. Okay? It's, it's faith that walks. Okay? And this is a good one. This is, this is us now. If, if you've had that faith where you were a, you had the opportunity to use your faith to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then this other f- walk in faith kicks in. And they're not really different, but they're kind of different. They're the same. Okay, here we go. You see, faith is needed for salvation, and works don't have anything to do with it. But after we are saved, well, this is where it gets good. Our works must reflect what we gained through faith. I want to read that one more time. Are you ready? But after we are saved, our works. Oh, whoa, Kevin. <laughs> it's all about faith, buddy. It's all about faith. Okay, we'll see after James gets done with you. But after we're saved, our works must reflect what we gain through our faith. Faith does not cease, for we walk by faith, but we must now have a walking, doing faith. Mm, that was a good amen place. Did anybody say, I think I heard somebody kind of say amen. It's a really good place to put an amen. It's, it's a faith that puts feet to our message. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Man, I got saved. I got saved back in 1997. I got baptized the next day. I was being baptized under that creek and it's cold. And it, what was they saying? Shall we go out the river and everything good? So what do you do for God now? I just kind of, well, I'll go to church. I'm church. I, I'm a church Christian. I go to church and stuff. I have work day. I show up for that. And I'm church. I'm church. I'm love. I love Jesus. Yeah, we need work day people. Okay. But listen to what James says about faith. And this is where I think we are this church, okay? I really do. Because I can, I can think about days. We will have people that will show up and serve hot dogs at that daggone homecoming parade when it's 112 degrees out there and be at a grill and just be sweating. Hey, you want a dog? And it's a Fifth time the same kid came up and got, hey, you can have another dog. You can do it. And they just love and they're sweating and they're taking pictures of us. And this is what faith is. This is walking faith. Listen, James 2, 14 through 26. You should go home and read the book of James today. Just read the whole thing. Just snuggle up with God and just read the book of James. Listen. Verse 14, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister, okay, I've got to be honest with you. I want to pick on somebody right now. I won't look at her. Her name is, it starts with an M and ends with an Annika. She's always doing stuff like this, Okay. So I don't want to, I'm not looking at her. I'm not making direct eye contact. I don't look back over here. And I, there's a bunch of other people. But I want y'all to like think about the lady that starts on the M and ends with Annika. Okay? And there's another one. I mean, there's several. Like, you know, the K 
Airy and some of those that do stuff around here that they don't, they, they, they just, anyways, listen, I want, I want you to think about people in our, when I named someone, I left everybody out, so I want you to just think of everybody at our church, okay, when I'm reading this, okay? And this makes me feel good. Do you remember when we had that shoe deal up there? And those daggone ladies and kids showed up up there and guys and they were washing people's feet and putting socks on them and giving them new shoes. Listen, I want you to think about those. I want you to think about when Gail is wearing the, the uh, what is that, uh, that sandwich, uh, what is that? The little Debbie cake? Yeah, like oatmeal cream pie for the, uh, for, for a uh, trucker treat. I want you to think about that. Okay? I want, as I read, I want you to start thinking about our church. I want you to walk out of here happy. You need a, a good job every once in a while. Not too many will get all cocky. But I want you to read this. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, they should have said, we'll pray for you, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by, what word is that? Action is come on everybody is I didn't say that you said it and you read it see faith see we get us we we stop short of what faith is faith is this thing that we have faith in Jesus Christ that he is who he says he is we buy into the whole package and we ask him to be the savior and lord of our lives and he does it but then we stop with our faith right there until we come up to something where we're sliding on black ice and going Jesus take the will and then save us from something that's bad and we go oh man I've got to have some faith right now God give me some faith right now it's a bad time in my life I need you to give me some faith right now he wants us to plug faith in right then the moment we get saved and then he wants us to walk in faith everywhere we go bottom line it says it says in the same way Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Your faith that got you saved, it didn't keep you saved because you didn't keep applying it. It don't keep you all holy and almighty. It says right there, it says, if it is not accompanied by action, it's dead. So if you want to get saved just for fire insurance, wrong deal. I didn't say it. Go argue with James when you see him in heaven and have a fit with him. I don't care. I guarantee you this is what he says. But someone will say, this is so good, James. He kind of knew our church. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. I say, show me your faith without your deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Mm -hmm. You believe that there is one God? Great, great. I believe in God. I believe in the man upstairs. There's no stairs. There's God. And there's his throne. I don't need you to refer to him as a man upstairs. He's God. He's got a name. Actually, lots of them. Isn't it the funniest? You know, I love that name for God. He says, when uh, Moses said, who do you want me to tell him that sent me? And he goes, I am. Really? That's kind of funny. So, the coolest that ever lived, I am. 
the one that's over, like, created the whole universe, I am. He's, he's, he's everything. Isn't that cool? I am. That's a pretty, that sums him up. You believe that there is one God. Good. I'm glad you believe. Even the demons believe that and shudder. If I believed that Jane Storr had good sweet tea and I told you about it and you love sweet tea, mm, it's the best. But you never go in and try it. All you can talk of is secondhand information that does not apply to yourself. We might say, I'm a good person. I believe in God. I believe. I believe there's a McDonald's in Neosho. It won't do me any good unless I pull in. I believe, yay. So do the demons in hell. They believe that there's a God. And they shudder at it. You foolish person, person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Remember that? God said, I need you to go offer your son on the altar. Your only son you had when you were like 100 years old. the one that was he had with the wife he was supposed to have it with. He gets the knife out and is ready to kill his son. And the angel's like, whoa, 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 I know you believe now, man. You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. You know what I think sickens our world? Is that they don't get a good snapshot of who Jesus Christ is by looking at the church. That's for realsies. The world doesn't get a real good snapshot of Jesus by looking at us sometimes. And the scripture was filled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? Remember that? She preserved those spies that were spying on that land and they saved her. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. That's tough. That's a little bit tough. But here's what I know about our church. Sometimes I think we have more deeds than we do anything else because we want to share the love of Christ with people in our community. This is who we are are as a church we don't even have it all figured out I just told you today if you see something I need to be doing as a pastor since I've never been a pastor before you need to let me know but I'm telling you right now I don't have it all figured out but I can tell you one thing that I do know is that we want to make a difference in this community we don't have to have it all figured out God's the one that's got it all figured out all he wants us to do 
is he wants us to put some legs to the faith that we're proclaiming that he is God in our lives. That's the bottom line. Okay, so sideline Christianity isn't really a possibility. Gotcha. Do y'all remember that Rich Mullins song? Do y'all remember Rich Mullins? He was a uh, Christian artist and he was... He sang some fun, cool songs, but he, he sang this song. It was talking about faith without works. It said, it's about as useless. This is the words of the song. It's about as useless as a screen door on a submarine. Faith without works, baby, it just ain't happening. One is your left hand, one is your right. It'll take two strong arms to hold on tight. Some folks cut off their nose just to spite their faith. I think you need some works to show for your alleged faith. Faith without works is like a screen door on a submarine. It won't work. I think this song could be our theme song. Our church doesn't have a lot of nice things but we have a lot of hard-working people. People that want to tie in and make a difference. People that will tackle the big jobs and the small jobs. People that care about other people more than they care about themselves. People that will give to others and expect nothing in return. People that will love people that don't even, they don't even know. People that don't walk around with a puffed up chest and a big head, but letting everyone know how holy they are, but rather they keep their head down and walk their faith. People that, that aren't great at religion. Oh, this is a good one. We are people that aren't great at religion, but are great at being the church. We are people that we share the love of Christ, not by what we say, but rather by what we do. Ironworks, this place, this church, is a faith-walking church. I want to continue to share that. I want to continue to share care. I want to continue to reach, love, and give so that our world can see our faith in action. Faith without works is dead. No, we didn't work to get saved. But by George, we're expected to plug in after Jesus Christ brings about a miracle in our lives. Faith that walks. Faith that walks. Let me ask you a question. Men, are you the spiritual leader in your family today? Are you the spiritual leader in your family right now? Are you strong enough to take on anything that comes your way? Faith has got to be bigger than just one time occurrence at an altar. Faith has got to be something that we put on and we wear every day. Guys, I want you to know Christ as your Savior. But have you ever went for a job interview? And you go in for a job interview and you feel like the interview is going pretty well. But then the hiring person says, hey, um... Here's some stuff that goes along with this job. I'm willing to put you on, but here's some requirements. And see, we don't really like to talk about requirements. What are some requirements? Walk your faith.
walk your faith every day walk your faith I had a teacher the other day at school if they say prayer in school is not there they're lying to you somebody told you an awful story because prayer is still in school they still give tests so kids are still praying too oh lord help me I didn't study I tell my kids they can look up for inspiration and down in desperation but not to the right or left because of a lack of preparation so there's still prayer in school but anyway this teacher she came she goes you know how people do hey I'm kind of struggling with something really yeah I'm it's a load Will you pray for me? I said, yeah. I said, hey, let's walk to your room real quick. And I said, hey, this is kind of how I like to do this. If somebody asked for me to pray for him, I think we should do it just right now. So I just put my hand on her and I started praying for her right in the middle of her classroom. This is before kids. There was kids fixing to come in. I want to walk my faith. I'll pray for you. That really. That's like go. What? Go. Good day. I know you're hungry, but good day. I hope you find something to eat. do we walk our faith? It's pretty simple. We stay in constant communication with God and when he goes, yo, see that problem? I need you to step in. Do you see that need? I need you to step in. See that hurt? I need you to step in. That's walking your faith. That's loving your neighbor as yourself. That's what he tells us to do. Just love our neighbor as ourself. We step in, we intervene. We have empathy, not sympathy, empathy. You know what empathy is? It's walking in someone else's shoes. Faith, walking faith, will get you dirty. Walking faith can make you hurt. Walking faith can disrupt our lives. Walking faith is visible to a world that needs a Savior. And when you walk your faith, you give permission to a world that doesn't know Jesus to use the grace that God gave them to choose their own faith. And that's how the cookie crumbles on this faith thing. people are still upright and vertical that's grace show them the opportunity show them the opportunity you may flub it up you may think oh, I did the wrong oh, good grief. 
God, why'd you ask me to do that? I'm the worst person in the world for that. Why'd you? No, that's not how God works. You give him a little, and he can make a whole mess out of it. 